During the next half hour, we'll tell you about some wonderful changes underway for Theology on Tap. We'll visit Holy Name Cathedral for the ordination of six priests for the Archdiocese of Chicago. We'll take you on the Walk for Peace, an outpouring of support for anti-violence efforts in the city. Welcome to the summer 2017 edition of Sanctuary. Hello, I'm Father Greg Sackowitz, Rector of Holy Name Cathedral. The Archdiocese of Chicago is re-energizing its Theology on Tap speaker series. Theology on Tap events this summer will focus on learning about your Catholic faith, growing in your faith, and serving others as an outward expression of your faith. Here's a preview of the popular speaker series featuring some of the people who helped make this happen. Theology on Tap is uh, one of those hallmark programs of the Archdiocese of Chicago. It started uh, over 35 years ago as a young speaker series in the summers when young people from across the city in the suburbs would be invited to local pubs and, and parishes to discuss their faith and to share their faith experience together. Theology on Tap is a wonderful opportunity for young adults to connect with their peers from across the city and to engage topics that are of interest in our lives right now at this point in time and to engage those topics through the lens of faith. Theology on Tap moving to these three tracks is a really big shift from where we originally were. We have Learn It, we have Grow It, and we have Serve It. The evangelization track for Theology on Tap is really focused about bringing the church and the conversations in church out to young adults today. It's going to happen in bars and restaurants all throughout the Chicagoland area, and it's really about asking that question, who is Jesus, who is Christ, and why is faith important today? Well, I think the importance of Theology on Tap is that there's an outlet for young adults that isn't just the traditional Mass standpoint, because while the Mass standpoint is a really great way to learn about your faith, it is sometimes hard to connect when you're a young adult listening to these words from so long ago. So it's really nice to have speakers that you can kind of relate to a little bit more at points and be able to connect with other young adults who also want to learn more about their faith. Our Grow It track is for people who need more formation. Those young adults who really know the basics of Catholic faith, but they really want to go to the next level. They really want to understand why Christ um, said this, or why the church actually calls us to do specific things um, because we are Catholic and because we belong to Christ. If you go to a formation session, you can expect um, to learn or to be reminded about the tenets of our faith, what we believe, but also learn practical ways to live out, uh, live out our, uh, our faith in today's society. And um, in addition to that, you'll find opportunities to be more involved with the church and especially helping address um, some of the challenges that we face um, as a modern church. serve it. Actually putting our faith into action, working with our hands, because service without reflection is just work. So we have that reflective piece in it in addition to putting our faith into action. The importance of the serve it track in Theology on Tap is it's the opportunity to live out what you're learning about with your faith. So it is one thing to hear the message, but to actually apply it is so much more meaningful. You should go to Theology on Tap. If you're looking to take a step back into your Catholicism, give it a second try, or to even strengthen your faith, or even to put your faith in action, Theology on Tap is the place for you. Theology on Tap is a great opportunity to meet new people and to engage your life as a young adult through the lens of faith. 2,000 years ago, Jesus walked by the lake and he saw a lot of his friends and he called Andrew and Peter and James and he said, guys, come, follow me. I will make you fishers 
of man. And so the same way Jesus walks on the streets of Chicago by our own Lake Michigan and he says, hey guys, come and follow me. I will show you a better way of life. That's what Theology on Top, our young adult speaker series is about. It's an invitation for all of you, young adults, to come and to listen to the voice of Jesus. When we come as a community to learn with and from one another how we can be a sign of hope to this city and to our world. Go to totchicago.org for more information about Theology on Tap and for a list of dates, locations, and speakers. Now let's turn our attention to the latest group of priests ordained for the Archdiocese of Chicago. Six men ranging in age from 27 to 44 were recently ordained at Holy Name Cathedral. They come from the United States, Poland, and Mexico. Our sanctuary team caught up with a new priest as they were giving their first blessings. It hasn't quite set in yet, but it, it's, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a sacrament that not many people get to see, so I'm just so happy to have so many of my family and friends here to witness this and be a part of it. So It's still surreal, but just everything that it invokes is, is just, it leaves me in awe. It was just that great love that just pours forth. Every time I, I see someone that is in need of a blessing, in need something that a few words, it's just a real joy. I think many men will tell you it's when you're nose to the marble and that you have the whole church here on earth and in heaven praying and interceding for you and that the Holy Spirit is being called down that it may give you a portion of God's Spirit is just unbelievable. The litany of the Holy Spirit, uh, of the of the saints, the litany of the saints was was very moving, and uh, also the laying on of hands of all the presbyterate. I really felt like the part of the uh, of the priestly family here. So so that these were the two very important moments for me. The ceremony was beautiful itself. The choir, the people, especially my family who are coming, my friends, important people in my in my the influence in my vocations. I'm, I'm looking to serve the people of God. I'm, I want to be available for people, for confessions, for Eucharistic, to talk to people, to, to really represent Christ in the earth. I'm looking forward to being in the parish and serving people, and I'll be up in Waukegan. Um, so I'm looking forward to serving all sorts of people, people that are in the jail, people in the school, kids in the school, um, parishioners, uh, nursing homes. So going all over, and especially Waukegan, it's, a, it's an area that has a lot of need, and so I'm excited to be able to serve there. There's high school, and so um, I'm looking forward to all the different invitations that I'll be receiving so that I can go and help out uh, wherever there's a need. My reaction is, uh, I'm speechless. This is amazing. It's all a gift from God, all a grace from God. This is, I'm ecstatic. It is a long journey, but the grace is there. And when you trust and love the Sacred Heart of Jesus, you can do anything. And it's amazing. And a personal congratulations and welcome to my newest brothers in the priesthood. It's a busy time for the Archdiocese of Chicago's immigration ministry, given the current challenges faced by immigrants and refugees. Our radio TV office prepared a video for the ministry's recent Keep Hope Alive benefit dinner. It features people involved in the immigration ministry discussing the importance of their community outreach. Let's take a look. Pastoral Migratoria was developed uh, using the methodology uh, that's uh, outlined in Aparecida, which is a document was written by who now is Pope Francis. This was 2007 uh, when immigration reform uh, failed, the, legisl the legislation, and the immigrant community was totally in ashes. During that time, Aparecida appears to us, and, and we learned that um, uh, we as immigrants or anybody could be responding our baptismal call to be engaged in our community. What we are trying to do now is ensure that people are informed regarding their legal rights and their legal remedies. When we first saw Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, we 
did consultations for thousands of individuals. And of those individuals, 15% were eligible for more permanent forms of immigration relief. So I think it's really important at this time to try to alleviate the fears is that people get good legal advice. We are spiritual leaders, but as well, the people come for different help and advices, especially during this time, they, they need some advices with the legal issues. And we have at our parish, like example, my parish is a lot of people undocumented and they are, have some fear and we see that uh, when we work together, when we got the advices from professionals that help us to, to share with our community, with our people, with our parishioners, and we can really help them. Después de que salen con los círculos de, del círculo de paz, las personas sale, sale When they leave the peace circle, people live with an experience in their faith, knowing the parish, the church is with them, that they are not alone. They can come and ask questions. They can come and speak with agents of the Pastoral Migratoria to be able to confront any situation that may arise. Working for the greater good has become very important for me. And also getting to know people and knowing that I can uh, assist them, put their fears at ease if they have any questions or they need help with their paperwork, being able to help them in that way as well. We all work together uh, as a team to try to provide legal or you know, spiritual help whenever needed. I uh, hope that the Polish community can be working more with Latinos and other minorities here in Chicago. Um, the platform that uh, kind of unites us is the Catholic Church, and I'm glad that Catholic Church is going in the direction of uh, social uh, work. Immigration is a, a process that uh, created this country and this nation, so uh, we should be more inclusive. Uh, they should be more inclusive instead of, of kind of building barriers between immigrants and the rest of the society. I mean, it's really important to me that we, you know, treat people as we would like to be treated, as they should. Everybody, uh, that's I think what draws me to the practice of immigration law is that if we're talking about the undocumented, for the most part, we're talking about people who came here to make a better life for, for themselves and for their families. They're hardworking people, you know, their mothers like I am, and they're just trying to do better, you know, for, for and give opportunities that they don't believe existed in, in their home country. Our role as priests is to shepherd people, is to accompany them, to walk with them, to listen to them, to pay attention to their needs. That's always been the job of priests, you know, shepherds, uh, you know, so this, the issue itself, I mean, this happens to be a big issue now, but it, it doesn't matter what the issue is. And we always need to be attentive to what the people are feeling, what they're going through, with things that they need help, uh, so that we can respond. I mean, that's the job of a pastor. God is love, and the Catholic Church always taught that we should be helping others like Jesus told us to do. He not only taught us how to love and who to love, but also how to take action. That's why I think the Catholic Church and the Catholic community should get involved and stand more broadly behind the immigrants. We have to make sure that uh, we respect uh, the immigrants, the refugees, uh, whether they're documented or not who are here in this country. Uh, there are people who are trying to better their lives, uh, escape poverty, escape violence sometimes. Um, and they have contributed mightily to our state uh, and to our nation. Uh, so I think it's very important for us to keep in mind that uh, we are better off because uh, we are an immigrant uh, nation. Congratulations to Elena Segura and to our entire immigration ministry team for their very needed outreach to immigrant communities throughout the Chicago area. Stay with us. In a moment, we'll take you on a walk for peace to Chicago's Englewood neighborhood. Hello, everyone. I am pleased to invite you and your peers 
to join us at the National Catholic Youth Conference, November 16 through 18, in Indianapolis, Indiana. This conference brings together 35,000 high school age Catholics and their chaperones from across the country to pray, learn, and grow in their faith together. This year, I'm planning to join nearly 1,000 Chicago young people in Indianapolis as I meet with you and celebrate one of the opening masses. The conference features concerts, keynote addresses, faith sharing opportunities, and most importantly, celebrations of the sacraments. This festival of youth is a great opportunity to develop and witness your faith as a disciple of the risen Christ Jesus. Talk with your youth minister and pastor to secure a spot at this conference as soon as possible. For more information, please visit the Department of Parish Vitality and Mission website at the Archdiocese of Chicago. Hope to see you at the conference in Indianapolis in November and also at the Send Off Mass at Holy Trinity on Sunday, September 10th. May God bless you all. Welcome back to Sanctuary. This spring, the Archdiocese of Chicago announced anti-violence initiatives to help promote peace and safety in our streets. To help draw attention to this critical issue, Cardinal Blaise Supich led hundreds of people in a Good Friday Walk for Peace that began and ended at St. Benedict the African Church on Chicago's South Side. Participants followed the Stations of the Cross while remembering those who lost their lives to violence. On this Good Friday, Lord have mercy, you have come to remind us, the Catholic Church in Inglewood and all the people of goodwill in Cook and Lake Counties, that when you walk with God, you never walk alone. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. January 1st. Maurice Delaney, age 38, male. January 1st, John Warship, age 39, male. like this can bring change to the mindset of the people in the community here uh, by having people to come together working together and to stop the violence you know amongst one another we are all uh, one body of Christ you know everybody's unique everybody's different but we are all the same we're all human beings about people being saved and getting their lives together. It's so important. It's about these children. They out here on spring break and we need to come together as a community. It's, about, it's so important to save these children's lives, any nationality, any color. That's what matters. That's what matters. Before my tour of duty, I pray and ask God to not only keep me safe, but to equip me with ideas, relationships, and resources that will allow me to help someone make it through another day and towards their future. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. February 22nd, Jan Shup, 31, male. February 22nd, DeVell Coleman, 24, male. I think we always gotta remember that our faith like the scripture said, without works is dead. So our faith ought to move us to action. Our faith ought to say, and I'm hoping people here to say, that are first coming from outside the neighborhood to say, all right, what can I do next? 
And I'm hoping that we as a church provide them opportunities to come and say, here are things you can do next. Here are ways to get involved. Here are ways to mentor. Here's a way to get involved in a food pantry, in a social service center, and, and with our young people. The 12th station, Jesus dies on the cross. March 29th, Jerry Jacobs, age 37, male. March 30th, Patrice Calvin, age 26, female. And so we want the world today to know that this is Chicago, that we are people who want to work together. If you'd like to see more of that Walk for Peace and hundreds of other videos about the Archdiocese of Chicago, go to our YouTube channels, youtube.com slash catholicchicago and youtube.com slash chicagocatolico. The school year just ended, and Superintendent Dr. Jim Rigg sent out a video thank you message to teachers, staff, students, and parents involved in our Catholic schools. Here's Dr. Jim with his summer shout out. Hello, it's the summertime. Time to get outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. This has been a wonderful year for the Catholic schools of the Archdiocese of Chicago. And I would like to particularly thank our wonderful students for their diligence and hard work, as well as our outstanding educators and staff members who work so well with our students every day and who work in close partnership with our parents and guardians. We're already hard at work on the 1718 school year and will once again be introducing a common unified theme, the theme of We Are One Body. As we go through the next few months, we will study and reflect upon how we share a common ministry of education, how we come together as a community of Christ to support and uphold the children that we serve. This fall, we'll also be releasing our strategic plan for Catholic schools, which will include new goals, initiatives, and systems of support for the next few years in Catholic education. As we enter this summer, we continue to pray for peace and compassion throughout our region. Unfortunately, many neighborhoods throughout the Archdiocese are still plagued with violence. And so we join together in the Archdiocese in praying for a peaceful summer. Thank you again for the many ways that you have supported our Catholic schools this year. May God bless you and keep you and return you safely to us this fall. Thanks, Dr. Rigg. And our Catholic schools are heavily featured in our final video that highlights several of the people, ministries, and activities that make for a vibrant faith community. Here's El Castillo with a trip around the Archdiocese. Students, faculty, and staff at Pope John Paul II Catholic School on Chicago's South Side take time out to pray for a peaceful summer. They are united in prayer this May afternoon with more than 200 Archdiocese of Chicago Catholic schools in reciting the prayer of St. Francis in hopes of reducing violence during the summer months. Congratulations to the principal of St. Therese Catholic School in Chicago for winning a Golden Apple Award for leadership. This is Phyllis Cavallone Jurek gets the good news from local anchorman Rob Johnson as she arrives at school. The entire student body is on hand to greet her and celebrate her being the first principal from a Catholic school to receive the award. I am so blessed. I look at you and I just don't know how any moment could match this. This is just beyond words. You touch my heart. You touch my soul. I want to thank you and let you know that it's a joy to come to work every day. And I feel completely surrounded by love. And I, I just, I'm so happy and blessed. Thank you so much. The Office of Catholic Schools announces that 18 teachers, administrators, and staff members from across its 217 schools are the 2017 Heart of the School Award winners. The award recognizes Catholic school employees for their outstanding contributions to the schools and the students they serve. The 2017 Crystal Awards are given to six retiring Catholic school principals this year to thank them for their years of dedication in providing students with a quality Catholic education. Those principals are Bonnie Brown of Prince of Peace School, Mary Jo Burns of Ascension School, 
Michelle Marecki of the Cardinal Bernadine Early Childhood Center, and Charles Terry from St. Vincent Ferrer School, all in Chicago. Also honored were Roy Rash of St. Francis de Sales in Lake Zurich, and Susan Rise from St. Benedict School in Blue Island. A much-needed playground is erected in one day at St. Columbanus Parish in Chicago's Park Manor neighborhood. The playground becomes a reality thanks to a partnership with Kaboom, a national nonprofit dedicated to bringing active play into low-income communities. We see here in Park Manor, like lots of communities in Chicago, just a rise in violence that's taken place um, right here in our own neighborhood outside the front doors of the rectory or outside the front doors of the church, whether it's drive-by shootings or stories of people that I'm connected to here in the neighborhood who have experienced violence. Um, this week, I was with a family who lost their 17-year-old son, a family who lost a 15-year-old son, and just talking to a young man that stopped by their build today who witnessed someone lose their life less than a week ago, not far from our parish. And so people here in the community know that St. Columbanus Church is somewhere that you can come to to receive food and services and just a sense of hospitality and welcome. And I think that's what the playground is ultimately gonna be. It's a sign for our community that our church and our school is deeply invested here in Park Manor. And we believe that when we come together as community, we have the power to change the community around us. It's you, it's you, it's you who builds community. It's you who builds community. Holy Name Cathedral plays to a full house in May as Cardinal Blaise Supich ordains 17 deacons during a Saturday morning Mass. The ordination of deacons this year includes both permanent and transitional deacons. The transitional diaconate is a step in becoming a priest. And more than 700 people attend Mass at the Cathedral to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Apostolic Nuncio Archbishop Christopher Pierre delivers the homily and extends the Pope's blessing. Catholic Charities has 150 programs for the needy in Cook and Lake Counties and comes to the aid of one person every 30 seconds. I'm Al Castillo with a trip around the Archdiocese. Find out more about Catholic Charities now you can help support their various ministries by going to catholiccharities.net. Congratulations to Monsignor Michael Boland and his tremendous staff at Catholic Charities for assisting more than one million people every year, regardless of religious, ethnic, or economic background. Thanks for watching Sanctuary. I'm Father Greg Sakowitz. May the Lord bless you and hold you in the palm of his hand.